All right. The recording is on. Welcome, everyone. I'm Josh Wilson from Longsite. I'm your moderator for this session. It is super fun to spend a little time thinking about uh, non-academic adopters of Sakai. Martin Ramsey is going to be talking about this. And it's, it's neat to hear about Sakai's expanding adoption. It's one of the most exciting things to me. So uh, let me introduce Martin very quickly. Martin is the managing director of the LAMP Learning Consortium, and he's been in that role since 2006. LAMP is a community of colleges, universities, and other learning organizations that share Sakai, Big Blue Button, Warpwire, and other technologies to support teaching and learning. So Martin's been a consultant with the Seath Company since 1993. Wow, that's a long time. Helping clients on four continents and 13 countries improve their processes and develop their people through technology and training. He's the author of two books, including one that's right behind you, a brand new book called the Possum Principles, I believe, right? Right. Um, so he's, he's, he's got other books kicking around. He, Martin is very active. He is a wise voice in the Sakai and Aperio communities. So before I, I hand it off to Martin, just a quick reminder, we're a small group, so this shouldn't be too hard, but uh, please mute yourself when you're not speaking, but feel free to unmute yourself and speak up when you'd like to. If you have any questions, enter them in the chat and uh, I will uh, pass them along to Martin at appropriate breaks in the action. So this session is being recorded. It's gonna be available later on on the Aperio YouTube channel. So you can watch out for that. And I'm happy to help with any technical issues. You can feel free to message me in the, in the chat if you'd like, but hopefully we will have none. So, so it's 10.03, Martin, take it away. Well, and, and I'll say, well, first of all, thanks, Josh. Um, it's good to be with everybody. And I will say, because it's a smaller group, I'm perfectly fine if people unmute and we chat. Um, you know, if it were a large group, then that might be difficult. And so that, that would make sense. But I think, I think this will work just fine. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to talk about what sort of a pattern that I see where Sakai is expanding into what I'm going to call the non-academic world, you know, beyond the walls of the university. And before I get into that, I think I better do a little bit of backstory, a little bit of history, um, and Eric may not even know this. Eric's, Eric's a member, but uh, he may not know these details. Um, in 2006, there were eight small private liberal arts colleges that were all members of the Appalachian College Association. So this is, a, this is an association of small colleges in central Appalachia in the United States um, that had a grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation to license WebCT. Many of you may not even remember WebCT, but it was at the time one of the two big players in the LMS space, WebCT and uh, Blackboard. And um, we had come to the end of our grant funding, but the cost of continuing WebCT, or if we had decided to switch to Blackboard, or at the time there was a third and up and coming product called Angel, um, it was just prohibitive. And so we ended up using Sakai, uh, frankly, because it was well respected and also because it was open source and I, let's, let's not kid ourselves because it was affordable. Um, it was something that, that we could swing and so, um, we, uh, we did a smart thing in 2006. We decided that we would ask this company called Longside. I had met Scott Sedell at an Educause conference. We just bumped into each other, had coffee together. And the next thing you know, we were um, sort of becoming friends and, and realizing that Longside was really good at hosting and we weren't. And so we, we did a really smart thing um, by asking Longside to be our hosting organization and taking care of some of that technical heavy lifting that we couldn't do ourselves. So on April 26th, 2006, it's a day that is still etched in my mind. We all looked around the room and said, are we live? I think we are. And so that was the day that we went live. This picture is me, uh, a much younger me with hair um, and Terry Golightly, who's still very active in the Sakai community, the late Tim Wiblin uh, with the pedagogy t-shirt on, uh, who I still miss to this day. He was really instrumental in getting lamp off the ground. And a guy named Brad Markham, who was at uh, Pikeville College at the time um, and was our resident cynic, you can tell from the picture there. And the four of us were sort of the, oh, I don't know, we were the movers and shakers, if you want to call it. We called ourselves the Uber coordinators because we were really, we, we, we were pretty special. And so, you know, that's, that was kind of the genesis of the LAMP Consortium. Through 2010, we were under the auspices of the Appalachian College Association. And that meant that only members of the ACA could join uh, LAMP, which would mean, for example, Eric's organization and David's organization could not join because they were not members of the, the uh, Appalachian College Association. You had to be a small private liberal arts college in Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, West Virginia, or Virginia, um, or you couldn't join. 
In 2010, we became independent of the ACA, which meant that schools outside of Central Appalachia could join. And so that, that became an important thing because, um, well, no, before I say that, let me say that uh, what characterized us by this point and, and moving forward then was this idea of, of, we really focused on pedagogy first, facilitated by technology. So technology was, I, I always say the technological tail should never wag the pedagogical dog. Um, you, should, you should always focus on pedagogy first and technology second. And that became our vision. And I would say the three things that really characterized us was this sense of community. We, we really had this, this feeling like we're in this together. Um, as a result of doing it together, we, we cost shared, which made it membership very affordable. So people could, people, schools could, could afford to join. And there was this heavy, heavy emphasis on removing technical barriers. If we could eliminate um, the technical barriers that a lot of small schools would have a hard time getting over, uh, that would make things better. Um, Josh knows this. We've we've had this summer conference called Lamp Camp. That's that's a big draw. It's a lot of fun. This picture is from that. Um, we got better and better at collaborating, supporting, sharing. It's it was like having a big reunion every Lamp Camp. So it it, it became this real community. We also were joined by schools that were outside of the Appalachian region. So we soon had schools from Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Texas. We even went international. We had a Costa Rican school. We had a Peruvian school. And then, and now I'm getting to the point of this presentation, something really interesting began to happen. We started to get these inquiries from what we began to call these non-academic educators. In other words, organizations that were not a traditional college or university, but they needed a way to train people too. They needed a way to teach classes online. They needed an LMS, but they certainly didn't have the technical resources to manage one on their own, nor did they want to. Um, and the LAMP consortium was a good fit for them. Uh, we had good software, Sakai, um, without the technical challenges and frankly, without the huge expense. And so we started getting interest from these non-academic educators. And so what I wanna do is I wanna give you 12 examples, that's a lot, but 12 examples, I'll go through them quickly that give you an idea of what kind of organizations I have joined. These are actual members of the LAMP consortium um, because it, it gives you a flavor for the kinds of organizations that have joined. And then at the end, I wanna ask some questions about what you think about all that. So let me start with the first one. This is the Cordoma Foundation. They are a nonprofit based in North Carolina that supports um, research into a cure for a rare form of brain cancer. I had not heard of it before they joined. Now I know more about it. Um, they use Sakai to connect the victims of the, of the cancer with each other and with treatment options and with researchers. In fact, um, you see on, this, on their website, they have this uh, patient navigator they're using Sakai to basically pair people who have the cancer with people who have either survived it or who uh, know about treatment options um, as, as a way to connect people. So it's a very non-traditional use of Sakai, but they're in it. They're, they're using it. That's what they do. Um, here's another one. This is Kettering National Seminar Seminars. They're based in uh, Kettering, Ohio, which is a suburb of Dayton, Ohio, um, but they prepare people for taking national exams in the healthcare fields. Um, right now, they're particularly working on a, a certification in respiratory therapy. So if you are wanting to pass the respiratory therapy exam and become a respiratory therapist, um, you probably want to study up, just like in, at least in the U.S., people study up for the SAT or, or the ACT or, or whatever it might be. So they're, they're helping um, people prepare to pass these national uh, certification exams, particularly in the medical field. And so you know, th they are offering courses but they're not courses that would, you would think of as being a college course. They're more of a course in a, in a very practical field. Um, so Kettering National Seminars is, is a member. This one's completely different. This one's called Leaders Ought to Know. There are things that leaders ought to know. It's a, it's a leadership development training company that provides leadership development and courses to all kinds of industries, particularly um, manufacturing, financial services. There's a, there's a big client in the agricultural sector, healthcare, and, and others. And basically, um, organizations sign up to have their, their supervisors, their leaders go through a series of courses, and it's for pay. Um, and they, they can either be self-paced, where they, the leaders go through at their own pace, or um, it's, it's often used to, to complement or supplement or, or be the main focus of uh, a series of training that's done on site, either by the local person or by somebody who comes in from the outside. Um, but it's all provided through Sakai. Um, so a completely different kind of use of Sakai, but it's not a college by any stretch of the imagination. Now, this one's a little closer to a college. This is the Clementi course in the humanities. 
this is a really interesting group of people. They have a real heart for um, adults who have not, often have not finished their high school degree and they want to give them an experience in a college class in the humanities or multiple college classes in the humanities. Their belief is that by, by learning humanities, um, they will understand much more about the world, about themselves, and be able to pull themselves out of the financial challenges that they're in. Typically, um, people who complete the Clemente course in the humanities go on to get a college degree, uh, and they probably would have never thought of themselves as being college graduates. So it's this, it's this wonderful program that's hosted on multiple campuses, and of course, particularly with COVID, they, met a real, they had a real challenge. They couldn't bring people to their sites, so instead they had to go online. And so they came to us and said, could we teach these classes online? Well, of course they could. And so even though it's, it's um, on college campuses, it's not a college program. It's, it's something completely different. So the Clemente course in the humanities is a, is a neat group of people. On the other side of the coin, this is a, this is a for-profit a consulting firm that services the food service industry. So if, you are, um, if you're in food service, um, the, the providing of, of equipment that goes into restaurants, the food that goes into restaurants and so forth, uh, this group, Grafton TDS, um, helps you with that. They have a series of courses that have to do with sales. They're particularly good at that. You know, you have to learn how to sell things. That's not something that you would typically learn in a college or food safety, or they've got a great one on what they call kitchen math or food service math. Um, so there's, there's a series of courses that have to do with um, food service. And these are offered again for pay. They have what they call the Grafton Academy, which people can sign up for and have access to a whole bunch of things in Sakai. So another good example. Did I hear a question? Okay, I thought I might've heard something. All right, no problem. I'm moving on because I know that our time is short. This is a very new member, just has recently joined, uh, Cadetize, or I've learned that the program is called Cadet. It's a Chicago-based law firm, of all things, um, that provides very specific legal training related to Medicare. So those of you who are not in the US, uh, Medicare is, is our healthcare service for um, older folks. And it's a very complex government system and very difficult to navigate, I know, because I, I uh, my, my two in-laws, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, both were in the program before they passed away. And so this law firm is teaching people how to navigate through that. I, I don't know much about the program, um, but they are rapidly building out this, this course. In fact, they have already sold out their first batch. They've sold out their second batch. And so it, it's obviously very popular, something that people are needing, and they're offering these courses through Sakai. So it's a, it's a, it's a legal thing that's kind of different. Um, good friends at the Editorial Freelancers Association. They've been members of the LAMP Consortium for a long time. But if you think about it, if you're a self-employed editor, editor, you basically edit uh, material, books, so forth, um, for clients, you're probably a member of this association because it it's, becomes an advocate for and a trainer for people who are in the editing profession. So these are, these are freelance editors, and they're all members of this group. And they offer all of their courses through this through Sakai. So they have they have courses going on all the time with people uh, signing up, and uh, that's that's what they do. And they're based in New York City. Here's another interesting group. This is the National Dance Education Organization (NDEO). It's a membership organization focusing on dance instruction. Um, so if you want to be a dance instructor and you want to become certified you will be taking your courses through NDEO and that's all offered on the, on the Sakai platform. So all those courses are, are through um, Sakai. Now um, in 2019, for the first time, there was a national cer certification exam called Delta, the Dance Entry Level Teacher Assessment Exam for certifying dance instructors. So if you wanna run a dance studio and you wanted to be certified and hang that shingle on the wall that says you're certified, you had to take the Delta exam and 2019 was the first year it was offered and it was done in Sakai. So we had a national certification uh, a national certification exam done in Sakai, which again, that was kind of like, ooh, that's cool. Uh, we also helped them, Eric knows this, we just helped them with their uh, national conference, which they had to go virtual this year. Uh, they used to have it in person. So there were over a thousand attendees and we helped them with that. I'm getting towards the end here. Um, the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Now they're part of, <coughs> excuse me, they're part of the City University of New York system. So they are an academic institution, but this particular thing that they're doing is not. 
they have a grant from uh, USAID, the, the foreign affairs part of the United States federal government that is providing criminal justice instruction. So judges, police chiefs, and so forth in Central and South American countries. So they're offering courses completely in Spanish, um, being, being run out of New York uh, on the Sakai platform, but being taught to recipient students in um, Central and South America. So again, a very interesting group of people, really nice bunch of people too. We've really enjoyed working with them. Um, McNeese State University, now this is a university and you'd think, well, that's not non-academic, but hang on. McNeese State uses Moodle, but their Upward Bound program, when COVID hit and they had to go online, uh, McNeese State would not provide Moodle accounts for high school students that were in part of their Upward Bound program. For those of you who don't know about Upward Bound, it's a program focused on high school students, helping them sort of get ready for college, particularly students who might not go to college otherwise. And so um, they came to us and said, we need to be able to teach online, but our university won't let us do it through their, their instance of their LMS, Moodle. Could we use yours? Yes, you could. And so again, a great group of people to work with. They've been hit hard. They've been hit by three hurricanes. They're in St. Charles, Louisiana. Um, but their Upward Bound program was a big success. And it was a lot of fun working with their professors because they already understood an LMS, they just understood it in Moodle, and so we had to sort of help them understand, well, here's how you would do it in Sakai, and they, they liked that a lot. Um, here's, a, here's a really big one. Sodexo is a Fortune 500 multinational company. It's, it's based in France, or it's corporate headquarters in France. They have a lot of lines of business, but they're probably best known for their food service management business. If you're at a college in the US at least, many of you probably have Sodexo managing your, your cafeteria for your students. Um, they are currently offering their well-respected dietetics internship program through Sakai. Uh, they wanted to be able to have a, about, I think it was about 150 um, interns each year, and they want them to be able to go through their internship program, and they're doing it in Sakai. Um, so very interesting there. And I think this is the last one. Uh, TDA, which stands for Training and Development Associates, um, they focus on low-income housing challenges. So uh, across the country, and, and I know that they are, they're, you know, they're in California, they're in Washington State, they're, in this, they're all over the place because we get support tickets from all over the place. Um, but they have a large grant from, I think it's from Housing and Urban Development from HUD um, to offer training and consulting uh, to cities who are trying to develop uh, programs that would resolve homelessness and housing and so forth, housing issues. And so they run these very large courses. They often have over a thousand participants uh, around uh, the, the topics of, of housing and homelessness uh, using Sakai. And they're typical, their clients are, are government officials in, in local cities. So again, a very interesting group of people. So huh, there, I finished 12. So the question is, what does this all mean? Um, that's, that's really what this boils down to. What does this all mean? So let me tell you what I think it means, and I'd like to hear from you. I, I think it means that Sakai is just not for academics anymore. Um, and I've tried to put on the screen here some contrasts. Um, this, is, this is unfair and very simplistic, so forgive me, but you know, academics are gonna focus on things like tests and assignments and grade book and lessons and resources and attendance. I, I wanted to put attendance on there because the University of Dayton has built our attendance tool and it's, it's uh, very much uh, in need, in demand. But there is this other side of the coin, these non-academic educators who focus more on, I would say, lessons first. You know, there, there's content I want people to step through. And in, in terms of that, they are particularly interested in embedded content. So le the lessons tool is very, very helpful to non-academic educators. So they can put videos in, they can put uh, discussion forms in, they can put tests in and so forth. Um, they're not interested in the grade book at all, but they are interested in certificates. And I would even say badging. That's something that's gonna be of interest to them. They do like the resources tool because they can make resources available to their constituents, whoever they may be. They are going to be particularly interested in branding um, where it's not, so, not such a big deal for um, a college or university because it's sort of like skin it once and you're done. Um, Eric, do you have any idea how many skins do we have in the LAMP uh, instance? I wanna say it's, it's on the neighborhood of 25, 30. I don't know if, there's, if we have any idea about that, but. You're thinking, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I would say that it's definitely in that range. Yeah, it's, it's it, you know, so where, where most institutions have one skin in Sakai, we have 25 to 30 because of this need for branding. Um, 
And, and another thing I wanted to say is there's this call for a facilitator role, which means if you might think of it as kind of an adjunct. I don't want you designing the course. I don't want you monkeying with the course, but I want you teaching the course. And so there's kind of a need for a facilitator role in that regard. Somebody who doesn't change the content of the course at all, but who basically watches the course, watches the students, helps shepherd them through uh, as they go. These folks are also going to be interested in, and Josh and I have talked about this a lot, ways to manage enrollment. You know, a college or university is going to have a, a robust student information system. These non-academic educators don't have anything analogous to that at all. Um, and so they, they're going to want some kind of what Josh and I would call the front end um, to manage the enrollment into Sakai, um, whereas college or university would use their student information system. These folks sort of need some, some small thing that can do that sort of thing. And frankly, they're interested in fee collection because a lot of them are for profit. I want to make sure that somebody's paid the bill before I let them into the course. Um, so those are just some thoughts. So I will, I am now going to stop and say, so what, what thoughts do you have about uh, these non-academic educators who are joining in the, uh, in the use of Sakai? And let's just open it up. Okay, jo oh, Josh says, as of now, LAMP has 34 skins. Wow. Okay. I missed it by, <laughs> by a pretty wide margin. I figured Kenny would know having created them all. So uh, yes. he did. And, and let okay. Me know. Very good. <laughs> well done. Well done. Okay. But that's just an indication of how important branding is um, into these non-academic educators. I mean, part of it, of course, is the fact that we have multiple schools that use the same instance of Sakai. So each school gets its own skin. But when you've got a single member um, who has five or six skins because they are serving different um, different niches or different markets, it, it tells you that skinning uh, branding becomes a, an important piece of this. So what do you all think? Do you think that the world of Sakai is, is changing? Um, and, and is it a good thing that this is happening or not a good thing? I'd like to know from some of the other folks. Well, uh, I think it's a great thing, not a good thing, a great thing that we can expand to multiple uh, non-college institutions. It's great. Good. Are, are you seeing that as well, Eduardo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I it just, I, I, I want to say that I get, I certainly get at least one a week. I've already gotten two today. <laughs> I get at least one a week. Um, and often it's more than that, of, an, of a non-academic organization that's saying, you know, could you help? So uh, the two examples I have today, one is in, in the Appalachian region where I live, um, but they do uh, um, service projects to help people, particularly with their homes. So they invite particularly college students in to come for the summer and work, volunteer their time to help fix up houses in impoverished areas. Okay, that's that's a good one. The other one has it looks like it has to do with helping uh, children with that are born with club feet. Um, so basically, helping with the surgery and so forth to correct that that problem. Oh. Um, you know, and, and I'm like, yeah, we want to help you folks out. Uh, so it's just you know, I like it. It's I think it's a good thing. Robert, we haven't heard from you, but do you have an opinion? Would you do you care to speak? <laughs> He's quiet. Josh, what do you want to add? There's my timer. <laughs> well, I want to add that it's it's 1025 and you have we've got five minutes remaining for this session. But, you know, this is something that I've been interested in for for quite some time. You know, Martin and I talk about this extensively, um, you know, and I, I I love the notion that Sakai is reaching a broader audience beyond higher ed. I love the notion that uh, there is growing adoption. And I've thought for a long time that these kinds of organizations really needed a place to go. And mm -hmm, they do. it's not that, you know, it's not that they've got nowhere else to go, right? I mean, there's Moodle rooms and, you know, they, they do have other options. We're not the only game in town, but right. on the other hand, we're, we're a good game. Yeah, uh, we're, we're a good know, game. And, and it, it's the, the conversation is really interesting when I, I, I typically would, I, I sort of name drop a little bit when they say Sakai, I never heard of that. What is it? And I say, well, have you heard of Duke? Have you heard of Pepperdine? Have you heard of University of Virginia? Have you heard of Notre Dame? And they go, well, yeah, yeah, I've heard of all those. Okay, they all use the same software. Oh, they say. Then I say, and you could have access to all that capability um, 
for for a low price because we're sharing it and they that's when they start going oh that this kind of makes sense to me um yeah so i'll as as we sort of move towards the end here let me just if if i may give you some thoughts um by the way kudos to josh's wife stephanie for this the web our new website which i really like um but uh Sakai is, I, I think, poised to explode. I'm gonna, I use that word on purpose, explode beyond the academy into all sorts of interesting new places. And these are the categories I'm seeing. And, and Eduardo, I, I'm wondering if you're seeing those too. And I don't even know if they're the same um, in, in Europe, but you know, we would have a nonprofit organization, which would be a distinct from a for-profit organization. Um, and I'm getting queries and, and joins from both of those. I mean, the law firm, for example, Catetize, you know, that's a for-profit law firm um, but on the other hand, the, the folks who help children with club feet is a nonprofit. And so I'm seeing both of those. And when it comes to the for-profit, I'm particularly seeing use for internal training. I need to train my employees. Um, and then there's um, companies that are basically selling their content. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting people to pay me for delivering content to them. A big one is associations. Um, there's an association around just about anything you could name. And it seems to me that they all need to be able to deliver content to their members. And a tool like Sakai would be a great way to do that. Churches and synagogues, I think would be a good one. We don't have a lot of those. Um, we've had some in the past that have sort of come and gone, but we don't have any right now. Um, and frankly, we've even got some individuals who basically say, I have a course that I wanna teach, you know, just one course. Well, you know, why wouldn't we be able to help them too? Obviously they're not gonna set up uh, an in entire instance of Sakai themselves, but this is where, uh, it would be helpful to, um, to to join the LAMP consortium because we make it affordable. So I, I think this is going to bring a new vigor to the Sakai community. I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a good thing. Um, but I also think it'll push us into uncharted waters. Um, I think that these non-academic educators are going to ask for some new tools that some academics are going to go, we don't need that. Um, you know, badging and certification, for example, I can see the, the demand for the certification tool to be much more robust would be something. Um, they're going to have a different pedagogical perspective. Um, I think that's okay. And there is going to be an emphasis on branding and multi-tenancy that I think we're going to have to deal with. So I, I feel good about where the LAMP consortium is to be able to do this. Um, I feel really good about where Sakai is, but I felt like I would, I wanted to do this presentation so that I could sort of say, hey, you know, there's people coming over the hill and, and they're not people that you might expect and they're gonna be really interested in Sakai. So I'll stop there, Josh. So I, I just wanna offer one other thought, which is that from a, a, an institutional perspective, these groups that you're describing, Martin, look most like the uh, the lifelong learning and, and continuing education departments. You know, there so you go, good there, point. Yeah. Potential middle ground that we might, you know, seek to 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 look at, to market, to, to promote in. So you know, I think there, there are all sorts of other opportunities. It is, not, it is 1029. Um, we've got about a minute left. I'm curious if anyone has any, any final thoughts, any final questions that they want to share. I will say, Josh, that um, I'm going to do a birds of the feather session next. I think I'm competing with you. I'm sorry, my friend. Um, <laughs> uh, but, so you'll, you, you'll you know, get yours later. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but I was, I was, you know, the idea was, so let, instead of a presentation like this one, let's just talk about what it means if there are going to be these non-academic educators joining uh, in the Sakai community. What does that mean for us? How, what, how could we best prepare? So if you're, if you're not doing anything else, I invite you to join that. <laughs> all right. And with that, it is 1030. So thank you all for attending this session. I am turning 